it's only the three of us on tour, yeah. so you go ahead and film whatever you want to film. I don't mind at all. Very good, thanks. Even though I was told once I had a face for radio. <laughs> you know, we'll go with that. why the reason is that you would need a lighthouse especially with the fog being in today and look at the you can't the visibility is next to nil we're approaching just up to the entrance to where we're gonna see look lighthouse which is the oldest lighthouse in operation in the world good morning everyone it's Sunday morning the 16th of April and today where we're gonna explore and we'll find and discover the oldest lighthouse still in existence in the world. And it's located right here in the south of Wexford in Hookhead. And right behind me, you can see through the fog, and you can see the reason why the lighthouse is needed on a day like today. Uh, it's still early. It's, um, it's before 9 o'clock. And the visitor center, if you see here, it, uh, it's an operation from 9.30 to 5 at p.m. so there's no access to the grounds outside those hours so what I'm gonna do now is gonna walk along the coast and see the beauty of the coast and then at 9 30 we're gonna get in on the grounds and at 10 o'clock I have a tour of the Hook Lighthouse so stay with me while we investigate this amazing world's oldest existing lighthouse This is all for foam actually looks like snow or ice. There's the lighthouse right behind me. We're on the outside of the wall. It says watch out for freak. Waves. And there 
there it is right behind me. Just think in the bad weather, this gets all covered with water. Comes up, splashes right out there. There's a couple of seagulls right there. You can see them perched on the rocks there. There's an interesting little cave just right on the back side here. You can probably make your way down. It's right beside the White House. Just on the outside of the wall. So to find out how to get to Hook Lighthouse, I'm going to put the uh, the map right above here to show you how to get there. It takes about an hour's drive. Uh, you follow for the most part. If you followed my uh, Tinter Abbey walk last week, um, it's just a little bit past the road. The same road you take for Tinter Abbey, except where you turn off to go towards the Abbey. You keep going straight for about another. 20 minutes to get to Hook Lighthouse. So, we have arrived today at Hook Lighthouse, the last destination that I had planned for my Wexford uh, vlogs. If you have any other suggestions of areas you want me to see, especially if there's anything I missed in Wexford or anywhere else in Ireland, to put it on the agenda for my vlogs, just make sure you comment in below. Don't forget to uh, hit the subscribe button. Um, we've hit the 4,000 hours um, so all that's left is to increase the, uh, the subscribers up to a thousand. So we're at 343 as I uh, record this. So don't be afraid to hit the subscribe. So here we are just outside the Hook Lighthouse. And if you see the front, there's a little play area for kids followed by a plethora of uh, picnic benches. And it's part of the Norman Way. So these are tracks all across uh, um, the south of Ireland, uh, you can go through it. Um, on this part of the area, you see we're here. You know, there's the church, there's a harbor, Loftus Hall, Templeton, and then there's a whole bunch of other ones. So we're going to be going, taking the tour at 10 o'clock. We're going to go all the way up to the top. It's 100 and I think 15 steps to the top. So we'll get a little cardio in, a little exercise. And here's what we're seeing around there. Look at the little boy there small little yoke see the play area for the kitties and then there's so this used it's a big boy jeez tells you what they're for here and paravein don't know what that's for the cable anchoring out to a mine. Hmm. And then of course, there's a small little anchor. Jeez, and another one here. It's a mushroom anchor, that one's called. <clears throat> and that would be a crab winch, I would say. There's an area here we can walk around. First off, let's go see what the little amusement part for the kids. There's a little black lawnmowers there so the kids can practice mowing their lawn. And here's the little caution. It's slippery when wet. Here you can create your own pirate name. Eating here. And then the 
kids could walk the plank. And there's even ropes that they can climb. And then there's a wheel up top. Very interesting. It's a nice little area for kids to play in. And then what we have in here. Coastline. Coast Life Saving Service. The Bristol Wagon. So that's what they use to help rescue people from the sea. Old fashioned way. Here's some ships, uh, pictures of ships. And then cannonballs. Skull. And these are some of the wildlife that you can see off the shore. You have this gray seal, the common seal, a leatherback turtle, a pilot whale, a fin whale, common dolphin, blue nose dolphin, and a harbor porpoise. Interesting. There is a gift shop and a restaurant here as well. A cafe and uh, toilets and a picnic area of course. Let's see what this area is. These are heritage listed sites. So it's just a walk away. And we'll walk around here and we'll see what's going on. There's a little snack shop. Hi. And here gives a map of the uh, the outlay of the area. The big chair. William Marshall, the greatest knight. So he's the one that uh, that made this, has all the history there. If you want to pause the video now, you can read up all that, or it'll be on the link below on the Wexford Light, uh, Hook Lighthouse. I'll uh, put that on below so you can uh, check it out, see what the uh, timetable is that it's opened and the prices and what they have to offer. Adirondack chair. And of course, there's the lighthouse right there. Let's see. Maybe I'll see. There's the, maybe a potential thumbnail. And this is located at the base of the lighthouse. See what we can see from here, this angle. There's a medieval entrance. But this will all be part of the tour, so. And that's a better view, eh? Look at that's where we were walking around before, but it's definitely a better view. The whole area. See the waves crashing up. Now on a bad day, spraying right up into the camera. So people do come out here. Very nice views up here. It's a little foggy, too bad. But, uh, Looking forward to getting up those stairs though. Looks real interesting. 
maybe it'll bring back memories of when I went up the uh, the stairs in uh, St. Kenneth's uh, Cathedral, the tower they had there. That's in the Kilkenny vlog. So if you want to uh, follow my uh, Kilkenny vlog, if you haven't seen it yet, and here's the Sea of Our Seas. It has a little audios that tells you all about um, the water cycle, why the sea is salty, treatment, global warning. So you have little headsets that you can put on and then fishing lines, plastic shopping bags. Oh, 10 to 20 years, that's the recycle. How long it takes to biodegrade. So it tells you like weather, 50 years. Glass bottles, one million years. Oh, so it's just a, it's a little interactive uh, video or audio that you could try to promote the uh, preserving the oceans because they're very vital. Uh, there's a lot of pollution out there, a lot of plastics. That's why we're eliminating, trying to eliminate plastics, and that. That's why everyone's invented with the uh, the paper straws, which everyone hates. But there's an alternative, you can get the little metal or glass ones there that you can keep or the, and uh, keep uh, use, reusing them and keep them yourself. I've seen them uh, in a lot of places now. So it's an upgrade of the old, uh, the old plastic and the paper. So there's always a way around it, you know? Welcome to Wilk Lighthouse. Toilets has some little pamphlets that you can take in the description above. Water for Crystal. I have one that's very similar to that. I got for uh, Club Person of the Year with the GA at the Mary's. Here's a replica of the uh, more effects, I think it's. Here's a little machine you have right at the uh, entrance way. You put a three euros in, it accepts all of these denominations, and it gives you a coin. And here's what you can get. It's the Hope House and then the four provinces of Ireland. And for three euros, that's not bad. Here's this in, we're just waiting for the tour. It starts at 10 o'clock. We've got the ticket here. And here's the little entrance way for a part of the restaurant. We have these little slate paintings. So 30 euros, 34, 30, 30, 30, 30 euros. Hand painted, 40 euros, 35. And then there's some other stuff you could buy all the way. But here's what I wanted to show you. I wanted to show you where you could sit and eat have your fish and chips or clam chowder or fish chowder and they have open face uh, um, shrimp sandwiches and you could watch the waves. That's a very lovely okay, uh, idea for if you, after the before or after the tour you can come in and have a, a bite to eat and enjoy this beautiful setup. So now we're about to take the tour. Uh, first one for the uh, Sunday morning starts at 10 a.m. And we have Noel here who's going to be showing us all the little secrets of the uh, Hook Lighthouse. Right get a walkie-talkie. Mm -hmm. So there's the inside restaurant that we just seen, and also you have the outside one. Like I said, there's a lot of space. I think they have, it said it had up to 120. 100. Mick. Mick, nice to meet you, Mick. Why? Why? Nice to meet you, why? I'm Mick. You're very welcome. Very good. So, lads, um, probably a thing to say, but as many questions as you have, Mick, no, just ask. No, no, I. Is that all right, Jen? I've been here once before, but I've never taken the tour. So, like everything else, I want to see what the whole. Yeah, is. Well, I'm going to take you through about 1500 years of Irish history where we're standing. Very good. You know, it's pretty cool. Now, as far as safety advice goes, I have to give it, there's no running. Uh, that's not a problem. <laughs> so I want to 
It's only the three of us on tour, yeah. so you go ahead and film whatever you want to film. I don't mind at all. Very good, thanks. Even though I was told once I had a face for radio. <laughs> you know, we'll go with that. I want to bring you guys to the watchtower. I want to show you a few things around here. Just some modern stuff with lighthouses and things like that. Very good. Uh, you'll notice as well, just over here to the right, I have a detonator store. Okay. And a gunpowder magazine. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'll tell you all about that when we get in here. Okay. So this building was built in 1972. Okay. When we got electricity for the first time. 72. 1972, yeah. The uh, head up there for me. Okay. The uh, things were different before the 70s. Um, you would have had your, say, young Wyatt here. I'm going to call you a young Wyatt, but you're obviously the, the, the youngest of the three of us. <laughs> <laughs> but your <laughs> your job as a supernumerary assistant keeper would be up on top of the lighthouse okay. up until 1972, turning a mechanism every 25 minutes mm -hmm. to rotate the lens to get the three second flash, which is important. Um, uh, we've around 70 lighthouses in Ireland. No two can be the same because if they are or were, you don't know where you are. Yeah. So your night flash here is a single flash every three seconds. Mm -hmm. Straight across the estuary there, that's Dunmore East and Waterford. Hard to see at the moment, you know, maybe it'll lift. That lighthouse is a long flash every four seconds. Okay. The likes of the Tusker Rock off Wexford is a double flash every seven and a half seconds. That's why they're all different. Okay. Who wants to end up where you don't know where you're going to be? Cool. Your day marker then is a white tower with two black lines. Mm -hmm. um, we used to have fog signals here. Now, this, fog, this, uh, this is a double diaphragm air compressed foghorn. This was a double blast every 45 seconds. This, on a day like today, this would be going off every 45 seconds, telling you you were in danger, you know? But Irish Lights decommissioned all of those after about, I think it was 2015. No, sorry, two, January 2011 it was. So no more fog signals. We're emitting Raycon beacons now, telling them that we are, uh, we are a lighthouse. But before 72, we still had fog, obviously. That's why we have a gunpowder magazine and a detonator store for the cannons and the flares, which was the fog signal. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's all good. Now, because it's just what us, that that's an old Marconi radio. Oh. When we got electricity, you pick this up. Channel 16 is the international channel for distress. And then we'd be channel 23. So if something happened out there and we were on this, um, pick it up on channel 16 first, uh, it would come in and then we would go to channel 23 which is from basically Tusker Rock to Minehead. So it's only this area here we're involved with, you know. Mm -hmm. um, the fuse went in it there recently so it's not up and running. We still get the, the weather um, on it on the hour every day. Um, we still, uh, we're, we're a weather forecasting station as well for midair and eight times a day we send a signal to our, our national weather uh, okay. forecast telling them what it is, you know. Mm -hmm. Right, because it's just us guys, I am going to go somewhere. Now just be careful on the steps. Yep. That's not bad now, is it? Nope. So, the tide has just turned, um, it's on its way back in. Today's tide is 3.9 meters. So, pretty much up to where it starts getting dark on that there yep. is the high tide marker today. Uh, the stone you're looking at is the limestone. This is a carboniferous limestone. It, it was used to build the building I'm gonna take you into in a few minutes, which is this tower right here. Yep. Pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah, it is nice. You know? On a, nice a, on a bad be. weather day, this oh, is really nice. The waves are landing on us here. Yeah. You know, the waves are dropping on top of the watchtower here on, on a regular basis, you know. Um, hopefully we'll catch a few seals when we're up here. They are there. They come in with the tide fishing. Uh, whale watching is quite common around here. Uh, this year was kind of October until about the end of January. So we had like fin whales and minke whales and the orca comes around. Um, every now and then you'll, uh, you'll, you'll spot a humpback whale. Okay. We tracked the humpbacks then through the IWDG. Their fluke or their tail, no two were the same, you know. So you get a, you get a photograph of the fluke of a humpback. You can put it into a data database and you can track it all over the world. So that's how we track those. Ooh. Did the salty uh, tour uh, a couple weeks ago. Went to the Salty Islands. How'd you get out there? Because they're not open for tours yet. You yeah, to, you we were the net. first one. It was you were the first one. Second of April. 
Who was doing it? Declan or one of his daughters? One of it. Well, there was three boats they had running Three boats, back and yeah. Forth. That's a fantastic. I mean, people, people, the Salty Islands are, I mean, I mean they're incredible. Oh, they're lovely. Um, but the, for an ornithologist, uh, the puffin season is incredible there. Yeah. You know, There was no different. puffins, but there was always, it was the, what are they called? Oh, you jocks and gannets. Gannets and, and then the, there's yeah. the water seals. And a lot of rabbits. A lot of rabbits. <laughs> rabbits. Yeah. Listen, yeah, I, heard, I heard they read like rabbits, you know. <laughs> so that's this building here. I'll bring you over to the main one now. The houses were built in the 1860s. Okay. So you have three types of lighthouse keepers. We spoke about Wyatt being the uh, supernumerary, the, the apprentice, you know. Then you'd have the old guy like me. I'd be the principal keeper. This was my whole house right here. Yeah. Then you had two assistant keepers. Young men like yourself, Mick. You'd be two of you guys. <laughs> yeah. One downstairs and one, and one upstairs. And here, I mean, you came with your families, yeah. which is very unusual for lighthouse. And you came for years at a time, you know. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you why when we go inside. Back in time, straight through that green door. Yep. And as soon as you walk through that door, you're in an 800-year-old medieval lighthouse. Just like that. The walls, for instance, here, they're four meters thick. I'm not great with hinges now, so they are thick walls. The staircase is in the outside wall, going up to the top. Now, very unusual. Now, listen, you've been in Ireland for a while, you've been in Scotland, you've been in Wales, you've been all these sorts of places. Yeah. Have you been in castles, Mick? Been in a few, yeah. Do you ever, or can you remember the direction you walked up the stairs in these castles? Or has any other tour guide told you no. why you're walking left to right or clockwise inside the walls? No. They were all built for defense because swordsmen were right-handed. Very hard for a right-handed swordsman to attack a clockwise tower, especially when the risers on the staircases are different heights. They're known as trip steps. Okay. The doorways are smaller. Now, not because they were being attacked all the time, but also heat rises, you know? Yeah, you know, you slept upstairs. But in times of attack, any one of us with armor on, being right-handed, different height risers, and big armor found it hard. So they were all built for defense. Okay. We're an 800-year-old building, built like all the rest of them, with their rib vaulted ceilings, keystones everywhere, thick walls, but we're going up counterclockwise which shows us 800 years ago, it was never defensive. The practicality of it is, it's easier to walk up the stairs if you hold on with your left hand and carry stuff. Okay. You know, it's pretty cool, isn't it? Mm. So you're probably wondering as well why I have a lens in a room with no windows. Yeah. This is to give us an idea of what we have on top. Now this is too small for here. Yeah. This hasn't been used in decades. Um, it's a Fresnel lens. Augustine Fresnel was the French physicist who came up with the idea of magnification for lighthouses in 1822. Um, yeah, this one, to give you an idea, this one weighs a ton. Our one at the top weighs three ton. It's a magnificent lens. Our distance we need is about 36 to 40 kilometers. You know. okay. And how do you get from down to up? Um, no, well, this, this is... This, this, uh, upstairs, the so one upstairs, on small pieces. Yeah. You know, it came up on pulleys on the outside and was put in and stuff like that. But um, this even came in, in in boxes and it was put together here years ago. Uh, it hasn't been used in years, but Irish Lights kindly gave us the loan of it to show people what a Fresnel looks, uh, lens looks like. Okay. Um, I mean, that's it, it, just incredible. Yeah. Uh, we do, actually, tomorrow's Monday, so we're going to clean the prisms here and it'll even shine brighter. The various forms of fuel we used were, you know, wood, coal, whale oil, coal gas, paraffin oil in 1911 electricity in 1972 when we got two 1,000 watt light bulbs. Okay. And then um, I think it's seven years ago this month or six years ago this month, we took them out and we put in six 13 watt LEDs. At the top right now is only 78 watts. And they tell us they last for 10 years. We've, <laughs> had, no, we've had no problems so far. Wow. But we're getting the same distance, you know, it's pretty cool. So the building we're in, like I said, is around 800 years old. But the first fires, can you uh, head on over that way to that wall? Okay. The first fires were recorded here 1,500 years ago by Welsh monks. Okay. Ah. So fifth century these Welsh monks got over. We were only a couple of hundred miles from Wales. And um, they lit small fires, like he said. And then um, the monks were here, you could say paving the way for the Vikings to come in. You go into Waterford, Waterford is called Vodre Fjord. It's a Viking city. <laughs> and Waterford is also the oldest chartered city in Ireland. Waterford was chartered in the early 900s. And it's very important estuary here. I mean, you can access a quarter of Ireland by boat from here. The Vikings knew this, the Normans knew this, everybody knew this. Mm. I mean, you can go to, we, we have three rivers called the Three Sisters Rivers, the Shore, the Nore, and the Barrow. 
So the likes of Turles and Tipperary, Offaly are up in Kildare, can all be accessed by boat from here. So we're very, very, this is the gateway to Ireland, you know. Mm-hmm. Now the monks were also here when the Normans came to Ireland. Contrary to popular belief and every movie or book or poem written about Ireland, the Normans did not invade us. The first time they came in was our fault, we invited them. And I'll tell you, I never said that, by the way. <laughs> yeah. the, uh, you can throw that in the middle. But I'll tell you all about the Normans on the next level. And the monks and the Normans helped to build the lighthouse in the early 1200s. We had a chapel built onto the side of the lighthouse yeah, for the that. monks. Um, it disappeared, we don't know when exactly, 1500s maybe. And local families started really looking after the lighthouse. Then the likes of the Redmonds, uh, the Loftuses and stuff like that. And finally taken over by Irish lights. Now all of our lighthouses are automated. And they're all controlled from Dunleary in Dublin. So we became automated in 1996. I do believe the last lighthouse to become automated was the Bailey in Holt in Dublin. Okay. All right. Any questions? No. Interesting little room here on my right, Mick. Yep. You can take a little run in there with your camera and you'll see the hole in the wall there. Yeah. Don't put your head in there now, that's a long drop. It's an 800 year old toilet. Is it? The, the garden robe, as they call it. So it was a bucket of water and that, you know. Yeah. And that's connected to one on the next level. But you need toilets in old buildings. Yeah. Very nice. How about that? That's nice. One of the tapestries from New, uh, they're actually in Kilkenny at the moment. Okay. There was um, over, I think it's like 14 of them made, they're all hand embroidered and hand stitched. This shows the artistic license was taken. I mean, the horses weren't that big. You know? <laughs> but, um, um, you know, shows the Normans coming over with modern types of plows, oxen, and stuff like that, you know. This is one of two fireplaces. Okay. We we're speaking about Wyatt earlier on. These would have been Wyatt's bedrooms until the 1980s. <laughs> so we're here to talk about the Normans on this level. It's another hologram, so you can get yourself ready there. I'll darken it for your camera. Okay. And you're going to come in here and you just keep that on that and we'll see how it goes. Uh, Hello, how are you today? All good here with Mick and Wyatt today, will you? Very well. Okay. <laughs> so. I assume you have told them all about me and my great deeds? It's going to be a busy day. Just get on with the show, please. (laughs) Very well. Let's just say modesty wasn't great with our (laughs) William Marshall, but his life was just incredible. I mean, he was the the, the second son in a second marriage, you know, of a minor enough sort of an English noble. Um, Inheritance wasn't on the the path for him. He was getting nothing, you know. He was lucky enough that his mother was French. His, His father certainly didn't want him. He grew up in northern France. He became a knight at a very, very young age. That was the, the money maker of the day, you know. That's when um, you and I, Wyatt, are on horseback. And with a name like Wyatt, you, you deserve a horse, you know. <laughs> but it, it's like, um, you knock me off the horse, you claim everything I have that day. Most of the jousting took place in northern France. Um, thousands of them would gather together. Um, it, it, you know, to, to kit yourself out for the jousting circuit, it was for the elite. So, you know, you, you won a year's wages every time you've done it, you know. He got the, he got the great name... You know, uh, the, the, the most chivalrous knight, that's where the word chivalry came from. He unseated Richard de Leinhardt, and it was noted as an act of chivalry that he only killed his horse. You know, he could have taken him hostage, like Richard de Leinhardt was king of England, but he only spent about eight months there. He was a very important man. Um, yeah, Ch- chevalier is, I, I do believe, the, word, the French word for horse, and that's where the word chivalry comes from. So anyway, he's over there, he's making friends, um, he bumps into Eleanor of Aquitaine along the way and uh, he, he took a spear for her. Um, we're in Ireland, we, we, we had the Three Sisters Rivers like we spoke about, but in Stirling, Ireland's divided up much differently back then. Everybody wants to control here because of the closeness to Wales with trade and so on, you know. So Dermot MacMurra goes over and asks the Norman king for help. Now the help came in the form of a couple of hundred medieval knights who were here in Wales and um, they basically had been promised land for fighting in the Crusades and so on, and there was no land to give them. So um, he bumped into Richard de Clare here and, you know, hey, why don't you take these lads over to Leinster? They'll sort your problems out for you. You know, when you're finished, give them a couple of acres. So now the, these knights are happy because they're getting new lands, you know, and they can take whatever they like when it's all over with. Dermot is happy 
he's getting help and he's going to be Lord of Leinster. And Richard de Clare is delighted because they're off his back. You know? So the year was 1169, 1170. They landed a couple of miles from here on Bag and Bone Head and the battle was over pretty quick. Um, you know, to seal the deal then, everything is done through marriage. Dear McGiffey's daughter Aoife and marriage to this night, Richard de Clare. And they got married in Waterford in 1170. Richard de Clare is also known as Strongbow. You know, they're here anyway. The decades pass, and basically, Dermot and his wife and Strongbow and Aoife die. And left behind is, I think she's a 16 or 17 year old girl. They wouldn't be quite sure. She now is holding on to these titles for the man they picked to be her husband. So she's kept as a ward of the king in London. She's a very large dowry, this girl. Um, she, comes, she comes with a lot of land, a lot of titles. One is Lord of Leinster, which is a quarter of Ireland, Earl of Pembroke, which is in Wales. And I do believe there was land in Normandy as well, made available to the man she married. So they chose William Marshall to be her husband. She met him two weeks before that. Um, he was a little older, he was only 43. And then all she had was 10 children from him. She had five boys and five girls, you know. It's a small enough sort of an Irish family when you think about it. <laughs> but um, they landed in 1201, you know, to secure the lands of Leinster, ran aground in a big, big storm over here on Bano Bay. And then he swore a vow he would build something if he survived it with his wife and his family. So he built Tintern Abbey. It's called Tintern de Voto, much smaller than the one in the Wye Valley in Wales. He built New Ross. You know, he laid the first stones in Kilkenny Castle, Carlow Castle, Ferns Castle, and commissioned the lighthouse to be built. Went back to England. I do believe he was over once after that, something happened. But um, the, the son of Eleanor of Aquitaine, signed a very important medieval document in June 1215 in Runnymede in England called Magna Carta. This is the second signature on Magna Carta is William Marshall, the original one. Um, John died a year later and he left behind Henry III, who was the grandson of Eleanor of Aquitaine. And William Marshall got the title of Regent of England. So from coming from the second son and the second marriage of a minor nothing, he is now king without the title. He's the only non-royal ever to hold the title of Regent of England before or after that. And he lived until the age of 72. He died in 1219, followed by Isabella a year later at the age of about 47. Interesting, isn't it? Hmm, very good. You, know, you walk down here, you see a little white building with two black lines in it, and you walk into the history of Ireland right here. That's very good, yeah. Uh, do you have any questions, Mike? No, thank you. Why, do you have any questions? Thank you very much. All good, Jack. Oh, well, he's smiling anyway. That's all that counts, right? <laughs> Mommy mosey on up the stairs then. We'll meet some light So this is the monastery that we call it, fireplace, toilet. We stored the paraphernalia here up in 1972. That's the dress uniform for the lighthouse keepers when the inspectors came, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I want to play you a lovely video now. Okay. Yeah, Thomas Tuck's tweet, lovely man, lovely family, generations of lighthouse keepers in his family. He was also our last principal keeper before we became automated in 1996. Oh, they're all automatic now, controlled from Delta. Mick, do you have any questions for me? No. You happy enough? Very happy, yeah. So, to let you know where we stand in the world of lighthouses, and thank you for coming down on this foggy Sunday morning. Let's start here with the Tower of Hercules, as it's otherwise known. Um, built in northwestern Spain and Galicia. It's uh, built by the Romans, but it's not the original building. It's been rebuilt loads and loads of times, you know, 16, 1700s and stuff like that. Then we move forward to the modern world. Now we have Sandy Hook in Joycey, this is in Monmouth County, it's the home of Fort Hancock and it was built in the middle 1700s, you know. Now this includes the modern world. So the likes of New Zealand, South Africa, Australia, they all got their first lighthouses in the 1800s. Now we put up Sandy Hook there, but would you believe the oldest lighthouse in North America is in Canada. It's called Sombro, it's in around Halifax and Nova Scotia, predating this one. Uh, then we have the Ferrosh of Alexandria, the, one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. Ferrosh being the Greek word for light and stuff like that. People who study lighthouses are called pharologists. That's okay. where the word comes from. The Egyptians <laughs> didn't do things lightly. 
Uh, it didn't survive its fourth earthquake in the 1300s, though. So it was destroyed. So uh, William Marshall may have seen it. Now, I don't know because he didn't write about it, but he definitely had to pass it. It wasn't destroyed for a couple hundred years after his crusade for Eleanor, you know. Which leads me over here, mate, to the, uh, the moment you are now in the oldest, fully intact, operational lighthouse in the world. And you'd feel like going, ta-da. <laughs> Very nice. The walls are some thick, eh? Yeah, they get a bit thinner up here. You know, you go from four meters down to about three meters and stuff like that. The staircase remains the same, the rooms get bigger. You know, the ribs are important. Everything's about an arch, you know. Yeah. Keystone's keeping it all together. You know, it's pretty cool. Great cool. So, it's time to go outside now. Okay. Uh, mind your steps again on the last leg of our journey. I'll get you out. And I'm going to show you the mechanism you would have had to wind white. Stairs are definitely easier to get up to than oh, any other Kenny. Oh. Yeah, than any other medieval castle, you know. There we go. Okay. So here's one of those wind-up mechanisms that White would have been in charge of up on top. Okay. The weights are in here. You know, we just have that as a museum piece. Okay. Again, view is not great today because the the fog. But then that gives it uh, why they're needed. It's why know? they're needed, yeah. <laughs> Jeez, that's nice. That's lovely looking, eh? Yeah. Too bad. Hi, it's Chloe. <laughs> that's our bakery now. And there's Pat. There. So all our all, everything on site here is made here. Okay. You know, the fish comes in a few days a week. Uh, the scones and everything are made here. The bread, that kind of stuff. And what are those things, the holes That's are... a water treatment facility. So okay. no more raw sewage, so everything goes through that. Okay. Mm. Want me to get you and you say something on it? And just hold sure. it there? Yeah. Well, thanks, Noel, for this incredible, incredible uh, tour, you know, wealth of knowledge. Like, I just want everyone that's coming to Wexford, if you come to Ireland, make sure you go to the sunny southeast, although it's not sunny today, but make sure you make your way down to Hookhead and visit the oldest lighthouse in the world that's still operating. And you get to have this wonderful tour yourself and enjoy the grounds. And afterwards, don't forget, stop by the restaurant and have yourself either fish and chips, there's the uh, seafood soup, or the... Uh, Scones, freshly baked every morning. Yeah, and there's uh, open face uh, shrimp sandwiches. Shrimp sandwich. So you and locally enjoy smoked it. salmon. There we go. That should be good. Yeah, there's a slight slope here. Yeah, you Unless can see. You have on it. Just, water. just go stairs for the water. And the water pulls down outside, there. You know? Again, the oh. original fires would have been in here. Yeah, it is foggy, eh? Whoa. It is, yeah. It's like, it's like, what do they say? It's like PC. <laughs> But it doesn't stop people from coming here. I mean, we get roughly a quarter million visitors a year, like. Quarter come, million? Yeah, come out here, yeah. And it's a long old haul to get here, too. Do you know what? It's like, for, for all the public who are coming here, and the local people, and everybody involved, um, it's incredible. You're actually making a conscious effort to come here. It's not like you're passing yeah. it, you know? No. We're, we're also a social enterprise, you know? We, our manager's name is Lorraine Waters. She's just fantastic, you know? Got us through COVID, everything, you name it. You know, the staff here, are, the staff here are key. Yeah. You know, from the maintenance guys to the kitchen to the tour guys to the manager to the HR and stuff like that. But the social enterprise part of it, we're a non-for-profit. So on the peninsula, you may have noticed, there's not that much employment here. So yeah. we take on students. You know, my own daughter started working here a few weeks ago. She's yeah. 16. So we get them ready. We get them, you know, away from these mobile phones. Listen, there's nothing wrong yeah. with um there's nothing wrong with social media and stuff like that. We're a part of it right now. Yeah. But you shouldn't have to be able to talk to your friend across the way by seeing a message. So we get them used to speaking to people. We get them used to conversing. And then when they go off to college there, you know, if you can bring 30 people up a lighthouse on a tour yeah. and be confident in doing it as an 18-year-old person, 
you're definitely ready to go to college and whatever awaits you. So the world. The, yeah, so the social enterprise part of it is, 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 is fantastic here. I mean, we probably take on 15, 20 students every year. Huh. You know, then you know they, we've one girl who just left recently. She uh, started here when she was 16, went through college. She got her degree. Another girl down there, she's moving on, and hopefully, when uh, when when I'm gone out of here, she'll come back and take up the mantle or one of them. Yeah, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Morning. All good. The rocks can be a little slick there, eh? No, it's not. It's it's a, it's a take one today. Everybody's so friendly, aren't they? Yeah. 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 Well, it's Wex. That's why. It, that's why I chose Wexford. Like the people are friendly. I don't know. The glass is half full of them here. You know. Yeah. Um, you know where we are with the lighthouse. I mean, if you ever heard of George Bernard Shaw and, yeah. and lighthouses, you know. Um, called it the altruism of a lighthouse. I mean, altru being purely altruistic is just sitting on a very remote area doing good but expecting nothing from it. Mm. That is, to me, represent... I don't even like to think of the ships that were lost here. Yeah. I like to think of the ships that were saved because we are here. Yeah. And at the end of the day, in its 800 or 1500 years history of fires and lights here, and we're, we're just a grain of sand in a big picture, really, aren't we? So before we go and head on down the stairs to go for whatever a scone or whatever you guys are going to have this is the hook lighthouse you've done it you've been up the tour up 22 meters just across the water for that street there beyond Craden head is a little townland called crook so when the uh, infamous infamous cromwell came to ireland he said i would attack waterford by hook or by crook and that's where that's saying came from. And after the tour there's a little little souvenir shop you can pick up some souvenirs oh there's a pen maybe add this to my collection for my hat so the pins are 4.95 and then they have little book lighthouses 4.95 we'll pick up one of each of those and then they have books here some local uh Wexford preserves some all sorts of little books, some local products, natural products, and then for the bees, and then you can get postcards, and then some little books, and stuffies, and hats. So I'll just pick these up and then we'll go get a cup of tea. Here's an options of what they have available. Hookhead, uh, seafood chowder, soup of the day, scones, and then they have the main courses. And that, they even have vegan options. Mixed bean and vegetable curry with rice and chips. And that, so, but I'm just gonna go with maybe uh, just get a cup of tea myself or coffee, you'll see, and then maybe, maybe just a scone or something. I don't know. See what they have.